Welcome to another great Cal Basic tutorial. This is part nine of the um, PIC 18F Q41 uh, chip family um, tutorials. Uh, so let's get started. And this is quite a big one. We're going to be using timers. Uh, timer zero specifically, general rules though apply to other timers. And we're going to look at an 8-bit timer and a 16-bit timer to flash the LEDs. So what hardware am I using for this tutorial? I'm using a microchip low pin count demo board. I can show you one here in the lab. There we go. That's one here. I've taken off the, the connectors I had connected up yesterday for the serial because we're just going to be looking at the LEDs today. But the board comes with a potentiometer switch and um, some LEDs, which we're going to be using. So if we uh, look back at PowerPoint, this is the layout I'm using. I uh, put this up each time so you can see it. There's uh, no serial connections, but essentially we're going to use the internal timer within the Q41 chip to um, light these LEDs. So we're going to move away from what we, the code we have been using, which was wait uh, in to, into an interrupt. We're going to move to interrupts and we're going to check to see if a timer event has occurred. So let's go a bit deeper. Well, a timer is extremely good for generating accurate delays. We're going to be using the internal um, oscillator within the um, chip itself, but you can use external um, high high um, high 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 quality um, oscillators to improve the accurate times. You can generate, measure, and count loops. You can generate count um, and interrupts in time but it, the timer is not part of that CPU program it's counting in the background things are going on and you can check occasionally to see what's happening or you can raise an event like put your hand up to say what's going on and that um, is controlled by the clock source and two things called prescaler and postscaler and the diagram below sort of lays out and I'll peel that back in a moment but a timer isn't anything special, okay? It's just a binary counter that can be configured. We're going to look at one that counts from 0 to 255 and another one that counts from 0 to 65535. Five, five. And they just count away continually, okay? And we can reset them, we can put numbers into them, but they just keep, every time that clock oscillates, it counts up. And once it meet, reaches a, a value, it's going to overflow and generate an, an interrupt if enabled, but we're just going to check it today, okay? And it looks like this diagram, but we'll come back to that diagram below in a moment. What we're going to do today is we're going to create some code that sets up the oscillator, sets up the prescaler and postscaler. And we're going to start that timer because it's not free running. We have to start it. And then we're going to set that timer. And every, in this hour case, every 10 milliseconds, it's going to raise a flag. And we're going to read that flag. And then we're going to set it back and just do it all again. So we're going to make it um, flash LEDs every second. We're going to, we're, to calculate these numbers, I've got a spreadsheet. You, it's, it's in the Great Cow Basic installation. And we're going to use another tool as well. To get these values right, you can either sit there and just guess, or you can calculate it. But eventually, you will calculate the prescaler and the postscaler. And that's what we're going to work through in this uh, tutorial. So let's have a look at the block diagram for this chip. You will find this diagram are very similar in most of the data sheets, but specifically this one. You need to set on the left the clock source. We're going to be using the clock internally set, and then we're going to divide that by four because we're allowed to do that. Okay, that's a function. Okay, then I'm going to set the timer zero clock postscaler or T zero CKPS. We're going to set the timer zero out PS, which is the postscaler, and then we're going to check a flag called T zero. IF, which is has the has it overflow, but how does this all happen? Okay. Well, on the, we've seen this diagram. I'm going to build it up left to right. Okay. Well, we're going to select an oscillator source. As I said, you can choose many different oscillator sources. We're going to take the internal oscillator, and that's going to generate a little signal. 
at whatever specified frequency we have told it to generate. And then what we're going to do is say, whoa, let's just slow that down by a scale. And we're going to, you've got a choice between 1 and 32,000. And that generates a slower frequency, that prescaler. So what was quite fast is now proportionally slower. Then you can make it even slower by applying a postscaler. And that postscaler makes that signal long, longer and longer and longer. Well, if you've enabled the timer, and there's a flag for enabling the timer, you set a value in the counter. In a, there's a special counter. We're going to set that special counter. We're going to set it an initial value that we've calculated so that we get a, a, a an event every 10 milliseconds. But say we set it to B1. It will then start at B1. It will go to B2, like it says on the screen. It will go to B3. And in the background, even each clock pulse, it changes. But eventually, it will come up to, on an 8-bit counter, to FE, which is 254. Then it will go to FF, which is 255. And when that occurs, it will reset it to zero. And when that occurs, the timer will overflow. And that sets a special function inside of the microcontroller to say that the timer has overflowed. And the timer overflowed flag sets to 1. Well, if you've got the interrupt available, which is, which is you might not do, um, you get this interrupt flag, which is great. And that's what we're going to be checking. We're going to be checking an interrupt flag to see if our clock source with its prescaler, postscaler, setting that time of value, when it occurs, we're going to make sure. And because our timer, even with all those uh, prescalers and postscalers, um, I can't delay it enough to make it into a one second delay. I'm going to show you a technique to make it do that. So let's go into the code and let's get started. What I'm not going to do is spend too much time now on the preamble. I'm assuming that we know how to set up the chip. And we know how to set up other components in here. OK, so let's, let's do the important things. Set up my clock source. I'm going to set that to... 16, which is, um, it was typically at 64 megahertz, it's now at 16 megahertz. I'm going to assume that you know how to set up the LEDs as outputs because we need digital outputs. And these are the key, th the, the key things that we need to do in all our programs. Well, if we look over here, I've got a program called an 8-bit timer, and we're going to walk this through very slowly. So essentially, I need to initialize the timer by setting up the clock source and the prescaler and postscaler. I need to start the timer and then I need to set that timer value. Every time the event occurs, I'm going to reset that timer value. OK, so that it's, it's got a time period. So how do I calculate all this? Because it sounds quite difficult. I need to know what the prescaler value is, what the postscaler value is, and then what that value is I actually set the timer to. Well, I've written the spreadsheet. Let's have a look at my desktop. On my on my desktop, we've got a um, spreadsheet, and that spreadsheet allows me to do some calculations. Okay, so let me just make that a bit bigger for us, and then we'll zoom in on on this spreadsheet. It's a much bigger spreadsheet. It hasn't just got this in here, so you can have a little look around on that when you're good and ready. And essentially, this 8-bit timer, because we're going to do an 8-bit timer first, okay? Let me just see if I can get any, any bigger for you. There you go. 8-bit timer. It's an enhanced chip, so that's fine. I'm going to set the clock megahertz to 16. Now, what I'm, these orange values I can change and play with as much as I like. And that relates to what we saw in the diagram. I want a desired, I want 10 milliseconds. That's my desired time, okay? So if I set that sort of yellowish, let's make it to green. That's my target time. So I put in here, in this cell, 0 0.01, which is 10 milliseconds. And so we know where we're heading. You've got to look over here. Um, that also needs to be good, okay? If that is, if that says 10, whatever, we, we need to end up with the same number, a very close number between these two cells here, okay? 
So what I've already selected, a chip megahertz, uh, megahertz of 16. I've selected a pre-scaler of 256 because I've already put the value in. If I have a drop down of all the values I can choose. So if I choose a different, a slower one, I get red cells, meaning that the chip cannot be set up for 10 uh, milliseconds. If this goes red, the value is incorrect. So let's change the pre-scaler to something that works for us. 128 doesn't work. 256, it works. And I've got a post-scaler of one. So clock is at 16 megahertz. Pre-scaler at 256. Source divider at four, which is the that clock source on the left-hand side of the early diagram. Post-scaler of one will give me 10.048 um, milliseconds, which is fine. Put this value, 9C, or nine or a longer number 0x9c in that setup and we'll be good to go so let's have a look at my code so in here that's what we've got look we've got a pre-scaler 256 a post scaler of one that's what we saw in the spreadsheet with a time of zero clock source of four and this is all documented in the help file so if you press f1 on here it will work start the timer and then set that timer. And what we're, once that's done, the clock is running. And it's going to generate an event. And that event is TRM. This is the event here, which is, we have a, well, let's have a little loop of our program. We're going to test for the event flag. And that's timer zero if, um, interrupt flag. If it's, if it's zero, just wait on this line. Wait here on this line. So let's keep staying on that little loop. Or wait until, okay. Wait, I'm so sorry, wait while it's zero. The moment it becomes one, we know we've got to the end of our timer sequence. Set that to zero. And then all what I'm going to do in here is, and you can examine this yourself, you can actually, um, you can actually um, examine this yourself, but essentially it's going to count 100 of these things. And then the moment it's done 100, we, are, uh, we, we, have a, we can rotate the LEDs, okay? And then I reset the timer. So it's very simple. It's... Set the timer up, wait until the um, event flag occurs, count 100 times, and then toggle the LEDs. Let's program it up and see what happens. It's every second. I guarantee it. Look, watch, because we're not on the same program, because I'm, I'm, this is hard-coded now. You know, I've hard-coded the value, so rotating the pot does nothing, because the interrupt is coming from time is zero time is zero so it's waiting on this flag to occur the moment it occurs it increments our timer to say 10 10 milliseconds has happened once we've seen a hundred of these then we know it's one second and then it rotates the leds as before and if we change this here we can change this code we've seen this right up in, in, in early on in the early on we saw that we can do things slightly differently. I'm just going to toggle the LEDs. I'll, I'll toggle all the LEDs at once. But what it's sharing you is you can have other code running in the background whilst the, the timer is running. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I've got an initialization. Yeah, and that's it's doing exactly what I've asked it to do, which is fantastic. Okay. All right. Timer timer zero, eight bit, means that it rolls over at um, zero and two, it rolls over to zero after 255. What about a 16-bit counter? What's the benefit of a 16-bit counter? The benefit of a 16-bit counter is that you can have much longer delays without the complexity of all these, this timer counter here. You don't need it because you can actually do the calculations without having to count because the, the extended period of zero to six, Five five three five, a word number, is so much greater that the that the interrupt frequency can be much much longer. In this demonstration here, same code, but essentially, I'm setting up. I've defined a constant called time of zero 16 bit, and I'm setting a value which I've calculated, and I'll show you that in a moment. And there is no other counter in here. Oh, look at this! Like I was playing with it earlier on. Exactly. Um, there are no there are no counters in here because it's only going to um, 
hit the timer zero interrupt flag every second because I'll show you how we did that in a moment. So I'm just going to program it. Oh, it looked pretty similar out on the. There we go. It's now doing it. But there is no count of the interrupt flag. So how do I do that? In your install, you'll, I use this little tool. It's there's another timer help. It's called Timer Helper from uh, Mr. E. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. It's in your installation. It's Timer Helper. And what I've done here, I said right, the the, the clock, um, the megahertz of my chip is 16. I want it to interrupt every 1,000 seconds. And I've taken a prescalar value of zero of uh, 30. Oh, you can't see it. I'm so sorry. I'll zoom in on that on my desktop. Here we go. 16 clock cycle. I've got a, a frequency of 1000 um, milliseconds. I don't, I'm just going to take this top one here that says if I take a, a prescaler of a 1 to 64, I will get basically a second. Let's look at my code. 303036. But I've got a different number in here. I've got a big hexadecimal number. Why is that? Because they are the same thing. Let me just show you. I've got a calculator here. Three oh three six from that special tool. B D C and that's exactly what's in here. B D C. So this tool that we looked at earlier on, this piece of software says put the value here of 3030, 30, I could put 3036 as far as I'm concerned. I don't, you know, we could put that in here as far as I'm concerned. Then reset it down here, program it, and it will work because it, it can be binary or hexadecimal. But the LED is now rotating. And the essential thing about timers are they go, they carry on working in the background, and later on we're going to create an interrupt and do other things whilst all this counting is going on. So you can see here. This is what's called a blocking event. But you don't have to wait. You can do it slightly different. And go, would this work? If timer zero interrupt flag equals one, then do it here. Do what do all this code. indent that just to keep the it looking nice end if so it's only going to run our code it's only going to run our code when we when we tell it to so once that once that flag becomes one it's going to run our if statement so we now know that the rest of the time it's just in the do loop and it's only doing our change of leds when this flag is set and it clears the flag down as before. And then it rotates. We've seen the rotate. I'm not going to cover that. OK. So using, let's go back to PowerPoint. Using timers in Great Car Basic is relatively simple. We've simplified it down to the absolute essence. You can select your, you select your, you know, your oscillator. You can set your prescaler, set your postscaler. It enables it when you say set timer, and you can check the flags. It's extremely simple, nothing to be scared of. Enjoy, great car basic. So tomorrow we'll be covering CCP pulse width modulation. Enjoy.